So hi, everyone. Welcome to Link Together, the Art of Human Connection show. I'm Leanne Isaacson, and I'm really excited to bring you another episode of the show. So this week, I have Rich Waterman, who's a really great friend of mine. So welcome, Rich. Thanks for joining me on the show. Thanks, Leanne. So, pleasure to be here. And uh, away you go. I'm really excited to be sharing some content with your viewers today. Fantastic. Thanks, Rich. So um, for people that don't know Rich, so Rich is an entrepreneur, a speaker, an LL, NLP practitioner, and a Tony Robbins trainer. And I met Rich in 2012. So Rich, as you know, our worlds are so vastly different. I'm a farmer from South Australia, um, and you're in the UK, a speaker, an entrepreneur, and a Tony Robbins trainer. So can you just please Tell us a little bit about where you, you know, how, who you are and where you've come, how you've come to be where you are. Yeah, so a bit of background. Uh, I was one of those annoying academic kids at school, did really well, went to Oxford University, studied pure and applied biology, quickly realised I didn't enjoy sexing fruit flies and wanted to do something competitive and well paid. So I went into investment banking, which was, was well paid. After about two years, I hated it. Um, ended up doing it for 10 years, went through a messy divorce, uh, had an enforced life change from that. Uh, and from that, realized I wanted to live a life following my dreams and passions, also being time rich, excuse the pun, uh, for the benefit of my four children. Became an entrepreneur, classic midlife crisis, 35. Um, realized I wanted to understand my brain better, so I ended up at a Tony Robbins event. And that really did change my life because... Uh, for those of you who don't know, Tony Robbins, he's, in my opinion, one of the world-leading experts on mindset. And I became, yeah, obsessed with mindset and how it could help me. But actually, the, the clear thing that came out of that first event was how can I use those mindset skills to help others? And that's really been now been a theme in my life since then, the last 11 and a half years since that first event, um, becoming a Tony Robbins trainer, developing my skills in neuro linguistic programming or NLP becoming a mentor in business, a mentor for speakers and coaches, and also coaching business owners. I think one of those key things is we often see greatness in others before we see it in ourselves. Uh, and that's that's really what drives me is, is helping people to uncover their greatness. Um, Rich, one of the things that um, I noticed when, when I met you at World Business Summit in 2012, I had, um, it was the first time that I'd been to a, a, an event like that. And one of the, it, I think I heard you speak on the second day and um, some of the, the metaphors that you use in your in your speech and, you know, it, it really, I, I remember sitting there thinking about the, and I still to this day, about the dabbling duck. And so, so, so the way that you actually put together your speeches, is that a lot of the, the, the training that you've you know had from being in the Tony Robbins environment you know from a from a metaphor perspective yeah I mean, undoubtedly one of the one of the things that we learned early on in the Tony Robbins environment back in probably a course that in 2007 called Leadership Academy was about storytelling and the power of metaphor through storytelling and it was interesting the first exercise that we did we were presented this picture and we had to tell a story about the picture and I was just terrified because I had this belief that I wasn't a good storyteller. And then all these prestigious speakers on stage were saying, look, great speakers are great storytellers. And I'm thinking, well, I love speaking. I want to do more of this. So I have to become a good storyteller. And I just kind of broke it down and just started doing it. And then I think there's also an element of being a bit of a frustrated actor. You know, my, my partner Heidi's an actress and a singer-songwriter. And we compare a lot of what I do with my speeches and what she does in her acting. And it is, for me, is one of my biggest values in life is fun. And I think if you can tell, deliver content through metaphors, through through fun activities, um, it's much more likely for people to have that stick. Um, there's actually a biochemical reason, something called oxytocin gets released in the brain. So for me, it's very important that content is not only worthwhile, but it's also engaging as well. Um, and it's very important to me to have fun on stage. And I guess that came across that, at that event when we first met. Yeah, I, I, it, that's actually something that I, I, I think I'll never forget, you know, you walking down and, and you weren't on, you know, you weren't sitting there on, you know, standing on stage delivering it all, but you were actually walking down the aisles and 
and talking about, you know, like the the animals and, and we had to think about which one we related to. So, yeah, it, it certainly was a, a fun, um, it certainly was a fun event and one that certainly stuck with me. So I think that was when certainly, you know, the, the coaching group that you formed out of that um, World Internet business um, was was an amazing group and and I think I, I remember at that event there were quite a few speakers and and I interviewed Jim Graham who certainly was one that I met at that um, at that workshop as well but I remember by the time that you went to present your session on on the third day I think I'd said to the lady next to me who I didn't know for goodness sake don't you dare let me join any other programs I've joined enough and don't if I you see me go to my credit card, don't you dare let me. And um, and I remember after you spoke, it was one of the, um, it was one of those moments for me that I'd been doing lots of stuff in my world and and just really needed a an accountability coach. And and so I just thought, yep, this is what I really need to do. And I remember going to my 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 purse and getting out the my credit card and like this lady sitting next to me who she didn't I didn't know her it was literally just one of those things and she said but no you told me not to and I went no I just need to do this and um, so that's it, certainly that's how um, how Rich and I came to be and um, so Rich over the years obviously I've known um, a fair bit about you I must admit when you talked about um, the fruit fly when I was looking. So, you know, doing a little bit more diving into into who you were and, and where you're from. I must admit, I, I don't know that I'd heard the fruit fly story before. So that was really, and I was I was actually chuckling to myself thinking from a farmer's perspective, um, a, a, a fruit fly is certainly something that's quite important as that, that yeah, you don't have. It. So, yeah, I'm, it, it, it did amuse me that um, I actually understood that. Mm. Um, so, Rich, one of the things that over the years... I've come to know you, and I know that um, that there was an event um, a few years ago, and that that really made an impact on on who you are and what you do, and and also the people around you. And um, can you just tell us a bit about that story? Yeah, um, so the event happened on the uh, not that I remember it well, but twenty third of July two thousand fourteen. Um, and it's interesting. I think about all the things that I've ever done in my life. Um, whether it's going to Oxford University, whether it's becoming an investment banker, whether it's having children, whether it's becoming a Tony Robbins trainer, whatever it may be, uh, that day I really understood the meaning of the word commitment. Uh, and, it, and it has changed my life. It's completely changed my my view of what's important in life, for sure. And uh, to give you a bit of background, basically on, on that day, the 23rd of July, 2014, it was, it was late evening. It was about 10 o'clock at night. Um, I was going with the family to Euro Disney in Paris at about three o'clock in the morning. Um, and so, you know, rather than being asleep, because I was on Facebook, um, I'm glad I was because my friend uh, George, who's, uh, who's also trained for Tony Robbins, uh, is from Portugal. He contacted me on Facebook message and said, are you there, Rich? And, uh, you know, what? I, nearly, I nearly didn't answer. You know, sometimes you're kind of there, but you don't really want to, you think, oh, you know, I should be asleep. And you don't reply. And, I'm really glad that I did. And there's a reason that I did, because I knew that his, his daughter, Leonor, who was five at the time, she'd been having treatment in the Portuguese hospital for um, kidney cancer, childhood kidney cancer. Um, it's a relatively common form of cancer, and it's quite treatable if you catch it early enough. They hadn't caught it particularly early, but I knew she'd been having treatment, and it'd been going not too bad. Anyway, he contacted me, and he said, I need your help. <clears throat> and it turns out they come back from the hospital uh, in, in Lisbon, and they told George that um, the cancer was terminal and there was nothing more they could do. And all they could do was just to make her passing more comfortable. Uh, and I think well, like any, any father, um, you know, you, you might accept the seriousness of the diagnosis, but you don't want to accept the death sentence. Uh, and George had found out about a, treat, a revolutionary treatment in Germany. Um, it would cost about 30,000 euros. Uh, he, he'd done all his money, he'd been spent, taking time off to look after his daughter, spending money on treatment, so on and so forth. And he came out with these words, which were, Rich, I need 30,000 euro, euros to try and get my daughter this new treatment and save her life. And the first person I thought to help, help me was you. <laughs> 
And even thinking about it now, it's like three, three, three and a bit years later on, it's like I can still feel the emotion that hit me that, which is my first thing was, I don't know what to do. And my second emotion was, well, you're not going to say no because he's your, one of your best mates and you're a dad and you do anything to save your child. So I said, okay, my brain's going shit, shit, shit. I'm going off to Euro Disney in a few hours. I won't have a very good internet connection. How the hell am I going to do this? And all, I was, all that came out of my mouth was, George, book your tickets to Germany. We'll get you the money. Leave it with me. And basically all I did really was I, I shared – the story, the story of Leonor and her dad and her mom and shared the story online, shared what we needed, told them why I felt it was important. And really it was just a call to action across social media. I mean, there's so much nonsense on social media these days, but you know, sometimes it can be a real power for good. In this case, it was bringing that whole community together. And really my strategy was on a regular basis was to update everyone on what was going on, what was important, what I felt contribution really meant. And we raised that 30,000 euros in five days. So the family got to Germany, got the treatment. In fact, after about seven days, we had 40,000. We're like, what do we do? What do we do with all this excess money? And so we just said, look, okay, just wait a second. We'll just see how we're going with the treatment and, and we'll go from there. What was really interesting was that throughout, throughout this home period, this lovely little five-year-old girl, girl, Leonor, who we call the pink princess, was sharing all these video messages and stories about how grateful she was, how much she loved everyone, how appreciative she was of everyone, giving giving her an opportunity to get better. Um, she had some, some awareness of how serious it was. And for me, it, then it wasn't about the money anymore. It was about really embracing what contribution really meant, which is actually putting the needs of another person and or people at the center of your life. And what does that really mean? How, how do you show up when you choose to do that? How do you show up? And um, the story had an interesting ending because uh, I was at an event, uh, a Tony Robbins event, bizarrely enough, in September. And all these people were dancing, doing all these crazy dances and things like that. And at that very moment, I got a text through saying that Leonor had passed away. And my first reaction was I failed. Um, because it wasn't the outcome I wanted. I'm like, I, I failed. And I was like, okay, well, that's not really very helpful because that's not really really honouring the true memory of, of that amazing little girl. Um, and what's happened since is George has gone on and actually shared Leonor's story mm -hmm. on, on stages around the world. He's also helped parents who have lost children and to give their life a, a meaning because, you know what, if the passing of your child doesn't have a meaning, that's a very, very hard memory to process. And... Um, and I went on to, I had to find my way of expressing what it meant. And, and I went on to do that in various forms. I know that's something you wanted mm. to talk about. But um, yeah, that was that was a life-changing experience. And, you know, I've got I've got one biological brother, but in, that, in those few months, I acquired a second brother, which is my brother, George. So that was, yeah. that was a gift. Um, do you know, Rich, I, I, I remember being part of your community. And I think that, you know, for, for me, you know, again, being, you know, like a farmer from a rural community, you know, I know I've always known the value of community and, and that they band together when, when it's really needed. And, and I think one of the things that struck me at that time is that, you know, we who'd been involved in the community that you'd created felt just, you know, like we were there right with you. And, and I think, you know, like f for me, you know, that, that really was, you know, like we talk about lots of times, you know, you can't build communities online and, you know, your network, you know, from the perspective of, you know, your online network, it, you know, sometimes it's just professional and it's superficial. And, you know, like we, we have all of that, you know, from, from people that quite often, you know, look from the outside. But, you know, and I think for me that was one of the things that really just, you know, like just stood out, you know, amazingly how how you can actually build, you know, really deep connections and relationships with people no matter where you are. And and so, yeah, you know, that uh, that was a really, power, you know, for in, in, in my world and I know the people that were involved, you know, in, in the group that, in the coaching group that we'd been part of, they certainly... You know, it is something that we were all really part of. And, 
And so that's why, I, yeah, I suppose that's why I really wanted you to tell that story. And and then as far as, you know, what, what you've done with that since, because you created the, the Be The Difference. Um, and that was a really powerful um, and, and still is, you know, you, you think about you know, how you can actually be the difference and what difference you are in, in people's lives. So um, do you want to just tell us how, how that then came about? Yeah. Um, I guess I've been searching for a while, since 2006, that first Robins event, I was searching for what is this, what does my life mean? Like what's my purpose in life? And, and, and I know a lot of people are searching for their purpose right now. Some of them found it, some of them think they found it, some are still looking. And I think the more that you stay in the game, that purpose will evolve. And so you're right about the online stuff. So what I realized was that Online is incredibly powerful because it, it creates, it gives you an amazing opportunity for leverage. But I think where people get a bit lost is in the efficiency of the online delivery that you lose that true human connection. I think that's why we become friends is because um, you really get people as human beings. And for me, that, that was the key to this be the difference concept. So one of the first things that I did after, after Leonor passed was I had an opportunity at a Tony Robbins event to do a talk. Uh, it's basically each, we form into smaller teams at events, coming anywhere between 30 to about 70 people. And as a trainer, I'll run, run that event um, in the morning for my team, give them extra content, get shares, and then we'll go into the main Tony Robbins room together. Now, towards the end of the event, what we do is also something called a foundation talk where we raise money for charity. And you talk about contribution and what it would mean to to make a difference. People talk about making a difference a lot. And I started thinking about those words as I went on. Make the difference doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It's like, what's the recipe for making a difference? I don't know. And what I started to do was share Leonor's story. And it was interesting. The first event that I did it, our team raised three times more money than any other team. And it was funny because I always used to be petrified of making that contribution talk because I thought it was I thought it was selling. And I, I didn't talk about selling at all. I didn't talk about money. I just talked about an opportunity to be the difference. And a head trainer came up to me and said, well, what did you do? And I said, I just talked about contribution, about being a difference. And he said, would you share that with, with the other team? The next event, would you share that with other teams? And so the next event was a big event in, uh, in the States. And at that event, I had a, a team of 70 Japanese people. And I was lucky that I had two, uh, two Japanese um support you know, support senior leaders in my team. They were translating for me. And they also told me very clearly that the Japanese have very little cultural reference for charity. I said, that's mm. going to be interesting because at the end of this week, I'm going to do a talk about contribution and foundation. I want to wonder how that's going to go. And through that whole week, we went through a journey of going, going from the head to heart. And at the end of the week, I didn't actually do the speech. It was actually one of the one of the one of the guys, one of the Japanese people, did the speech because I felt that was the right thing to do. I wanted them to talk from their heart to, to the to his fellow countrymen and countrywomen's heart. And the Japanese who had no cultural reference to charity raised one hundred and eighty thousand dollars just in that one team alone. Wow! And the whole event tra training other training other people. Um, we raised one point three million in one day which was a record. So that was cool. And that was because of Leonor. And this is a very long answer to be the difference, isn't it? So let me, let me get on to that bit. No, it's good. Um, and so I went home. It was getting towards Christmas time. I was thinking, okay, what does this all mean? This is special now. This is, we get this little pink princess is now starting to appear. And what's really weird is when George and I were talking about Leonor, pink things would appear at random. We're like, okay, this is interesting. We're getting little messages here. And I'd also been toying around with maybe I do a website or a video around this. And I've been looking at kind of different domain names extensions. Those are the days when it was kind of moving away from .com. You could get new things like .coach and .biz. And there was one that was .today. And I quite like the immediacy of .today. And I've been contemplating about my discomfort with make the difference. People say this all the time, make the difference. I'm like, Make the difference means you need to do something and you probably need resources to make it. And I'm like, I'm not comfortable with that. And I was driving along. It was actually Boxing Day, day after Christmas. I was going to pick up my kids and uh, I suddenly thought, be the difference. <laughs> and now be the difference is cool because you don't need anything apart from yourself. 
And I thought, be the difference today. Be the difference. Stop today. And I pulled my car over and I just started sobbing because I knew this is what my life was, was, was meant to be about, which is about me being the difference today. And I'm sure these cars are whizzing past me on the road going, wow, that guy's emotional. Did he get socks again for Christmas or something like that? And he's, he's, he's really a bit upset. Uh, and that's where Be The Difference Today started. And um, then I started to evolve it because I wanted to think about taking ownership. I think there's a lot, and it's particularly relevant today, around people playing the victim mentality. You know, you see what's going on in Trump in the States and people are becoming victims of what he's saying, um, both in, in terms of feeling the need to support him or, or feeling the need to fight against him. But they're, they're, there's a lot of victim mentality rather than ownership mentality. And I thought, okay, be the difference today. In any one moment, I can choose to be the difference for myself and others. And I play this game a lot. I go into London where everyone is detached and in their own little world. I make sure that I bring my presence to London when I go in there. I also spend a lot of time now thinking about ways that I have been the difference. So I celebrate the ways that I've shown up and I make sure that I am celebrating the things that I have done rather than worrying about the things I haven't done. And I increasingly spend time contemplating how I will be the difference. And then there's a concept of group. So how are we being the difference as a group? How are you and I, Leanne, being the difference by doing this, mm. this, this interview? Um, how have we been the difference? You know, our, our coaching group thesis that we had that was run with all our amazing people from Australia and New Zealand. You know, there are many ways that we were the difference of a group, of which Leonor was one. And then also contemplating as a group how people can, as we can be the difference going forward. And then the final bit, because um, I know I can talk about this quite a lot, is my favourite bit, which is of talking about you being the difference. And I've, 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 I've done this a lot to you quite deliberately because I see the greatness in you and I, I know that what you started here is just the beginning and I love the concept of telling someone in your life how you are the difference for me right now because for me I was very fortunate growing up in a loving family my parents were very supportive and they constantly told me about things they loved in me and things they loved that I was doing and they told me really about how I was being the difference you can also tell people if you didn't catch it in the moment tell, tell someone how you were the difference to me in the past. But my favourite bit is seeing the greatness in others, and this is why I coach and mentor and telling someone how you are going to be the difference going forward. Because we always see greatness in others before we see it in ourselves. And that's why I'm on this show, because I see a difference in, in you. I see the greatness in you. And so it's partly for me to tell people about some of my stuff, but it's also... I think it's important for me to recognise the lady that's interviewing me right now because I see the greatness in her. And I think the more you listen to her shows and the people she interviews, you'll, you'll see that in many ways, Leanne's greatness is, is in how, how ordinary she is, but extraordinary in how she shows up and actually how she makes extraordinary connections with people through how she is, how she's choosing to be. So I know you're probably blushing right now, but hey ho. I know. <clears throat> Thank you, Rich. Yes, you, oh, I, I certainly am blushing. And um, as you know, we, we could sit here and talk for hours about, um, you know, the power of connections and the power of community. And, and, and I think Rich, Rich would be probably one of the most patient people on earth. He's known me for five years. And um, I think certainly we've had so many conversations over the years about, you know, see what what you recognize in yourself and and that others see uh, and i think that you know talking about um connections and 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 being real and being who you are <clears throat> is is certainly how i you know how i approach everyone really and it it it's really interesting you know and thinking you know going back to you know the coaching and and the mentoring and and connections and community you know from a network perspective um, i don't that that is how I that that is how I deal you know communicate and deal with everyone in in my network whether it be you know a face to face network whether it's someone that I've just met you know walking down the street sitting on the bus and um, the amount of conversations that I've had that you know have turned into to to something not necessarily always from a business perspective but from a personal perspective and you know sometimes you just recognise um, and. Sometimes you just recognise um, in individuals and, and and that connection just happens. So 
thank you, Rich. It, you know, the as I said, you know, I when I was trying to think of what I was going to talk about today, and you know, your Tony Robbins and your coaching, it was last night when I was thinking about the, you know, the the difference that that you have made and and made so many different people's lives. The Leonore story was, you know, is one that just you know will always sit with me. Um, again, from the power of what you did, but but how you just you know reached out to your community and um, and just did what needed to be done. So so probably changing tax a little bit now um, from 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 a business perspective. You know, obviously you've talked um, some you know a bit about your coaching and 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 the masterminds. And so from so with your business at the moment. How, so how long have you been on LinkedIn? And I know that you know, it sort of seems a bit of an odd thing to, to drag back to, but, you know, when, when we talk about, you know, LinkedIn and our network, you know, effectively our LinkedIn, you know, is our network and it, it can be our community. So yeah. from, from LinkedIn's perspective, so how, how long have you been on LinkedIn and using LinkedIn for your business? So I've been on um, LinkedIn since 2009, which is pretty much when I decided to really do coaching and mentoring properly. I've been a cons- business consultant since 2001 after leaving banking, but um, did the Tony Robbins stuff 2006, went through all the training 2007, 2008. So really it was 2009 when I think, right, I'm going to do this as a key part of my career. But actually the intention was very deliberately to transition away from business consulting and more into a coaching and mentoring and speaking space. And that's, that's where I started off with LinkedIn. And you're right, absolutely smack on right is, you know, if you want to grow a business, you've got to provide massive value to the people that you interact with. And I think actually that's what you're brilliant at, Leanne, is 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 understanding the needs of others and thinking about okay, how how can I assist with their world? Um, and I think that's why we're friends because we kind of both come from that that space. But to be able to do that, you need to have the right community and network to be able to provide that value. So it's is that coming together of a really high quality content, ability, skills, and the and the desire to serve combined with a really high quality group of people, community, network, whatever you want to call it. And so that's why LinkedIn is, is a key part of that. Um, and one of the reasons, again, why we've been speaking more recently is, is you know, how can I be more active in that? I'm kind of, with your help, bring my LinkedIn profile and got all that sorted out. But I know that I could be more active. I, you know, a lot of my coaches in my arena do a lot of facebook stuff and quite frankly you're going to get a certain level of client in facebook um linkedin is a, is a complete in my opinion a completely different level of network really high level of network uh, and so it is important and one of the things i do 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 mentor people on is just being smart about not only the quality of content that you share but where you share it and, and i think that that's where linkedin is is very very effective for me Yeah, it um, it's certainly, you know, from the perspective, I know that you and I have sat and had um, a few conversations, you know, and talking about you know, the, the sorts of connections that, that you know, you see that would be useful, you know, to be part of your network. And, and you know, I've sat there with me doing searches going, okay, well, tell me exactly, you know, if you wanted to connect with someone, who would it be? And, and so we've spent... We've we've spent you know quite a while sitting down really refining you know who it might be and and where they might be and so um, that certainly is something that is you know from from the perspective of of growing your business and growing you know growing anyone's business no matter what it is and I think that people also tend to underestimate you know you sort of look in your own circles and and think that that they are the sorts of people that you need to connect with but. Um, you know, and and probably I have over the years, you know, as you know, my network is very broad, and I think I've probably got connections in just about every industry that that is on LinkedIn. So, and you know, I think sometimes some of the connections that we make and some of the opportunities certainly come from sometimes what might be seen to be left field, and and I think that that's. That's one of the things that that I've always been good at is you know making making you know putting the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together and going okay so who else might there be that that knows somebody that knows someone and so you know from certainly from the perspective of you and I sort of going through the the LinkedIn process 
that I think has has, has happened quite often. Yeah, and I want, I, I'm just going to pick you up on something you said there. You're not very good at it. You're a genius at it. And so one of the things that I I, I think one of the key books that I've read in the last few years was Tim, Al, Tim Ferriss's 4-Hour Work Week, and he talks about you know kind of making bold or even vaguely outrageous approaches to celebrities or people you think you want to work with. And what I've found is, you know, I've probably only done that on a on a limited number of occasions over the years, but the, the, the impact that's had on my business and the change that that has had is 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 marked. And you know what? That's why I'm so grateful having you as a friend because you are amazingly good at going. Oh, do you know what? I either know that I know know that person through so and so, or within seconds minutes sometimes hours you you'll find that you'll find that connection and work out a way to how to make a human connection because i think that's what happens is a lot of celebrities or well-known people experts in their field they got a lot of people approaching them saying i need this or i want this or can you give me this and you're really smart at going okay let me go into their world and think what do they need let's serve them first and then if appropriate, I might make a request of them. But, you know, it's one of those things. I'm not, not even vaguely famous, really, in, in terms of sort of global terms. I've got my little sort of micro-celebrity stuff going on. But even I've had experience of, you know, people asking for stuff from me. And, you know, what you want to help, but after a certain period of time, it does get a little bit, you know, goodness me, like, I've got to look after my own stuff as well. So it's really refreshing when someone um, comes to you and says, you know, how can I, how can I help you and what you're doing? And I, I think that's... Well, that's a lesson. In, that's a lesson in life as well as in business. Is uh, you know, how can you serve others first? Um, and Rich, you're right. I mean, I've probably got lots of stories that um, we've we haven't got time for tonight. But um, you know, one one of the things like I I met a, a, a speaker from from the US who you know, and and I think one of the things that you alluded to before is like I you know I I treat everyone as as equal and and so. It, it, I don't get phased by I don't get phased by fame because um, at the end of the day we all you know, we we all know stuff about things that you know I know stuff about farming I know stuff about online you know there's a lot of things that I know that that other people don't and so you know at the end of the day who are we to say that someone you know a knowledge is more valuable than someone else's we all know lots of stuff in our own world um, but one of the things so so you know I've been called so many different, you know, fearless and, you know, at, from the perspective of being, you know, and connecting with people on LinkedIn I and and, pe- and making a difference, one of the things that I sometimes notice is, like, I, I had somebody put up a post about someone offering to, um, whether they needed help in public speaking. And the person that put this up was, you know, one of the, the the top speakers in the US. And so I had a bit of a chuckle about it, thinking, you know, well, obviously the person that sent him that cold calling message had no idea what he did and who he was. So I actually sent him a, a message on LinkedIn and I said, hi, um, I, I just, I, I saw your post about the cold calling and, and I had it, I was going to offer you a bottle of Australian snake oil I was going to offer her to sell you a bottle of Australian snake oil to help you with your next keynote speech. But then I realised if I did that, you'd know I knew what you did. So anyway, you know, just on a serious note, hope you're having a great day and, you know, bye for now, Leanne. And, and, you know, and this speaker sent me a message pretty much instantaneously back saying, ha, ah, Leanne, that was the funniest message I've had for such a long time. And so, you know, they're the sorts of, um, connections and and responses that that people get you know you, you know being and and I I quite often talk about being personal but um, being personal doesn't necessarily mean it's unprofessional that you can be personal and still be professional no matter where you know whether it's in in real to life real life or um, especially on LinkedIn and I think, think that that's certainly something that that people especially in business you know you, you forget that that you can be personal and professional at the same time. So, yeah. so yeah. Again, it, it is certainly something from from my perspective. I, you know, I, I always put my personal touch and and my human uh, part of connections on on wherever I am. Really. Yeah, and I have a rule around that, Leanne, which I basically don't do business anymore with 
people I don't like. <laughs> it's quite simple. It's like I, I, I'm very fortunate now having an investment banking career and been successful since is that, you know, I can choose what I do when I, when I do it, where I want to do it, with whom I want to do it, with as often I want to do it. It sounds, sounds slightly kinky, doesn't it? Be careful. But um, <laughs> it's a big part of that is like, you know, who, who said that business had to be boring and serious? It's like, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? And so, I, I I always look for that personal connection. If I if I if I'm not if I don't feel a strong human connection with someone, I, I won't do business with them. And that's you know whether it's coaching clients, uh, you know they're part of my peer group, and so I've got to speak to them on a regular basis. I don't want to speak to someone that's miserable all the time. And you know I don't mind if someone's in a difficult space and is looking to move out of it. I, I've been there, and, and you have as well. But yeah. you know what I. I want to have fun. My top value in life, you know, in Robbins, we talk about values or emotions are important to us. My top one's fun. So if I'm not having fun, then it's not happening. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, it It's probably a little bit like um, when, you know, it, I'm always smiling. You know, there are, there are very, even when things are really crap, there, there is usually a smile on my face and, and so, like, in all of my messages and, and any posts, I, I always post a smiley face. And the amount of people that say, oh, you don't, you know, you don't do that in a professional space, and I think, well, too bad. Like, I'm always smiling, and if someone doesn't like that, then um, clearly they weren't, weren't, weren't meant to work with me anyway. So you're right, Rich, it's about, you know, choosing who we want to work with and, and having that. And, again, you know, I, I always go back to the actual connection part um, it's you know it, it's having a connection with someone and and really for me that's the key also. Um, so Rich, I think probably to to end, you know, as I said, we could sit here and talk all day as as we have done on many times. So going back, if you could give three tips to people in in business, you know, from a coaching perspective, what would they be? Ooh, three tips. Uh, so the first one, hundred percent, would be uh, get very clear on what you are great at. Where's your genius? And and look to spend as as long a time period in any day, week, month. I track it. I track it monthly. Um, how much time am I spending in my genius? And 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 really deciding everything else is it something i need to get help with that or is it just something i just need not do anymore so i know that my genius is speaking coaching mentoring and anything that i'm not doing that's speaking coaching or mentoring i need to minimize the amount of time that i'm that i'm spending uh, in there so that would be the first one is one of the great things about the internet is that it gives you an amazing opportunity for leverage and to access loads of people. But the disadvantage is that means the barriers to entry are lower. So actually, do you know what? The only game where you can really outperform someone is, is through your own talent and passion. And to have the two of those aligned in anything that you do. Um, I spent 10 years in banking doing something that I was actually very good at, but I, I hated it. So I think it's important to align both both the passion and the talent together. That's That would be the first tip. Oh, second tip, second tip would be action becomes action comes before motivation. And so what I see at the moment is a lot of people looking for that spark, that, oh, I'm strongly aligned my purpose now, or I feel great today, or I'm waiting to feel great on a consistent basis before taking action on something. And while you can do that, and there's loads of mindset techniques out there that you can play with to do that, and I probably taught some of them from stage for my sins in the past. But the one thing that I can absolutely 100% recommend is if you're feeling demotivated or you've been procrastinating on something, the number one tip is to take an action, no matter how small, and I guarantee you, you will notice a significant shift upwards in your motivation. So if you can focus on consistent action, and actually the key is to be able to take action regardless of how you feel. And the great the great entrepreneurs, the really successful people I know in life are the ones that are able just to consistently take action regardless of their emotions. And actually, bizarrely, the more you do it, actually the easier it becomes because you don't have this kind of this wave of emotion going on. You have, you have consistent action, which actually feeds to a higher level of motivation anyway. That's number two. 
Number three would be, given that we're on this show, and I do believe it's incredibly important, is is have a whatever you want to achieve in life or however you want to be in life, maybe more accurately, have a real close look at your peer group. And for me, you know, one of the things that obviously we met at World Internet Summit, you know, and you've interviewed Jim, who's a, who's a friend of mine, and other speakers from that 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 event. Um, Steve Esser will be another one. Brett McFall. They they become personal friends of mine, and you know what? It's so powerful to see people playing the game of life at a high level. And there's always something you can offer them, and there's always something that they can offer you. And if there's that genuine level of mutual respect and admiration i think for me is that i really look at my peer group in two ways one of which is first and foremost their values um got to have lots of fun got to be high on integrity authenticity transparency vulnerability all these are important got to be very contribution focused and then i love being around people that are just peak performers of what they do and that's one of the sort of things that shows up my coaching and mentoring is i love working with people where me helping them to shift 1% has a dramatic impact on their results. And so peer group, hanging around people that inspire you, that uh, do inspirational things, that are inspirational in the way they show up, and it's, it kind of becomes an energy game, I guess. Um, people that are wealthy in life, and by wealthy I mean it could be financial, but it could be emotional as well, they have great energy. You can actually feel it. I can walk into a room and I'll be able to tell you people that have got a great life. So that third piece around, around peer groups is really, really important. So basically align yourself with what you're skilled and passionate about. Um, definitely look at you know your your peer group and where you are with that. And then that final piece, you know, action comes before motivation. That that not many people talk about that, and that was kind of the thing that I've learned in terms of getting addicted to working out how people implement or not that that for me is a key thing i notice is is that action piece that that might be out of all three the most important so hopefully that was useful absolutely and i think that well that's certainly something that that you've in well it's taken probably five years for you to actually get me to take some actions and uh, like i said i think you've been the most patient person in the world but um but Rich, look, thank you so much for for being on the on my show tonight, and I just so look forward, you know, to to continuing to work with you and 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 so for for anyone that would like to work with Rich, um, please, you know, from a coaching perspective, from a mastermind perspective, please um, visit get um, get rich, uh, richwaterman dot com. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, look, take the opportunity to work with Rich. And, um, again, I would really like to thank Rob Hicks of Hicks Video for producing this show. Again, it's been an international show. So we have Rich in the UK. I'm here in South Australia and Rob is in Maryland in the US. So thank you, Rob. You do every week an awesome job of producing this show and just making it so easy um, for for both of you know for for myself and for my guests that I'm interviewing, um, to to make it look easy and and it is it's fantastic. So again, for anyone who would like some amazing videos and and if you'd like to do a show, please get in touch with Rob Hicks of Hicks Video and yeah, look, thank you and I look forward to bringing you. I actually got some really exciting guests coming up. Um, I've got a a fella that I met through through LinkedIn um, in Portugal, who I'm going to be interviewing in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I have someone from Alaska who, again, I've connected with on LinkedIn who runs a, a lodge in Alaska. So, yeah, look, stay tuned for some really interesting shows. So, again, thanks, everyone, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Bye.